Flooded streets, battered homes, severe communication lines. Storm Kiran has smashed into northwestern Europe, unleashing strong winds and heavy rain. Take a look. The storm was driven by a powerful jet stream that swept in from the Atlantic. It had already caused heavy flooding in Northern Ireland and parts of Britain. And now, Kiran has hit Northern and Western France, uprooting trees and blowing out windows. At least one death in Paris was confirmed. 1.2 million French households were left without electricity. Schools, airports and rail and ferry services were closed down. This is unprecedented in France. It's the first time I've seen this. Normally, this is a tropical type of phenomenon, but it has reached the French coast and now it's in France. Normally, geographically speaking, it should be happening so much farther than here. But the planet is so upside down. How could such a storm not reach France when there's fewer fish in the sea now? It's like mankind is paying for what they've done, quite simply. Nearly all coastlines of the French mainland were under severe weather warnings. Local trains were cancelled across a sway through western France. Authorities have urged people to stay at home and avoid winds hitting over 200 kilometers per hour. France's interior minister said that over 1,300 people had to be relocated to campsites or shelters, and several houses were evacuated. The storm also battered southern England. In Britain, the Channel Islands were among the worst hit. Flights from airports on the islands of Jersey and Alderney were cancelled. Earlier the storm, Kiran hit the southern coast of England with high waves and rain striking Cornwall district's Penzance town. The UK's Med Department has issued a yellow warning for London and southeast England with an alert for bad to severe weather. It's a storm that we haven't seen the likes of in, in a generation in around 35, 36 years since 1987 when the great storm came through the islands and through the UK. The British Isles have faced a wave of fierce weather over the last week. Parts of Northern Ireland were ravaged by floods on Monday and Tuesday. Days before the storm struck the southern coast, three people were killed and residential areas were inundated with waist-high waters. Now, have you ever spotted a UFO in the sky? If yes, you aren't the only one to do so. Many people around the world have claimed that they have seen UFOs. Ever since the first sighting of this unidentified object more than 75 years ago, conspiracy and curiosity have surrounded UFOs. Our next report tells you more about these UFO encounters and how the US will now investigate them. Take a look. In the past few decades, Several phenomena have led to excited speculation in the scientific community that they might be indications of extraterrestrial life. So from the sighting of UFOs to what an alien would look like, experts and public have speculated about life beyond us. Every year numerous UFO sightings are reported by people from different parts of the world. While some sightings have been proven as hoaxes or simply misidentifications, others remain unexplained. For instance, last month Mexico held its first ever congressional hearing on the subject of UFOs, where a UFO enthusiast produced two artifacts he claimed amounted to evidence of non-human life. While many people still disbelieve their existence, there are numerous cases of strange sightings reported every year. And topping the charts with the most UFO sightings is the United States of America. According to the National UFO Reporting Center, 
There have been over 100,000 reported sightings and encounters of UFOs in the United States since 1947. With the highest number of sightings, the United States is the most popular country for people interested in ufology. Hence, with the highest number of UFO sightings, the US Department of Defense has now launched a new portal, allowing current and former service members, government employees and contractors to report UFO sightings. The portal, which is part of the All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office, will allow users to submit a secure online form with details of their UFO encounters. And the information then will be used to prepare a historical record report, which the DoD has to submit to Congress by June 2024. Over a hundred unidentifiable flying objects are reported every month to the National UFO Reporting Center. California, the most populated state in the U.S., leads as a state with the most sightings with just over 16,000 according to the data index. Florida, the third most populated state, follows with over 8,000. And Washington, the 13th most populated state with over 7,000 sightings. With over 100,000 sightings still date, Conspiracy theories about the level of government involvement and knowledge of UFO and UAP research and programs have circulated for decades. From rumors of a secret government facility holding alien spacecraft and life forms at Area 51 in the Mojave Desert, to the fictionalization of the topic in popular TV programs, the Earth theory is as perplexing. Back in 2021, the former U.S. President Barack Obama offered some levity on the question of aliens and his personal curiosity before assuming a more serious demeanor. During the late show with James Corden, Obama said, and I quote, What is true, and I'm actually being serious here, is that there is footage and records of objects in the skies that we don't know exactly what they are. And while the search must go on, with every mission to explore another world, every space telescope peering at a distant star system, and every radio telescope listening for signals from another civilization, we Earthlings are learning more about the cosmos we inhabit, and in doing so, about ourselves and where we come from. But we are still looking for that elusive answer. Are we alone? How many energy drinks do you consume in a week? Or should I ask, how many energy drinks do you have in a single day? Tonight, I want to bring your attention to a lawsuit which may influence your decision on whether you want to continue having that caffeine-filled concoction. The lawsuit is happening in America over the death of a woman with a prior heart condition. Sarah Katz was a student at the University of Pennsylvania. She died last year. She was all of 21. Reports say she died after drinking a highly caffeinated lemonade from a company called Panera Bread. The lemonade was labeled and marketed as an energy drink. The woman's parents filed a lawsuit last week. They say their daughter had no idea of how much caffeine was in this lemonade. Reports say this lemonade contained nearly the same amount of caffeine as five eight-ounce cans of Red Bull. Red Bull is marketed as another energy drink. At the center of this lawsuit is a drink called Charge Lemonade. It contains 390 milligrams of caffeine. Let me just say this. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration says most adults can consume up to 400 milligrams of caffeine in a single day. The company at the center of the storm, Panera Bread, has now added a warning label on this Charge Lemonade, all thanks to this lawsuit. While experts say that such deaths are rare and they usually occur when people have an underlying heart condition, the lawsuit has reignited a long-standing debate. Are energy drinks safe to consume? Over the next few minutes, I'll tell you, and I'll let you make that choice. Question one, what are energy drinks? If you go by marketing lingo, they are concocted to increase energy, enhance mental alertness, and also physical performance. And you'll be shocked to know that after multivitamins, energy drinks are the most popular dietary supplement consumed by American teens and young adults. Some are sold in packaging similar to soft drinks. Others are sold as energy shots. They're more concentrated. Next question. What's inside energy drinks? 
caffeine predominantly. 16 ounces of an energy drink contains anywhere between 70 and 240 milligrams of caffeine. Now caffeine is a stimulant, meaning it increases activity in your brain, your nervous system. It raises the circulation of chemicals like cortisol and adrenaline. No wonder, one cup of coffee and you feel fresh, focused. Five cups later, you'll be trembling. Finally, are energy drinks safe to consume? Turn that can of diet soda or energy drink around and you'll see a warning. Not safe for children, not safe for pregnant women, not safe for lactating mothers. But if you're not in any of these categories, are you sure it's safe for you? Let me tell you what research says. The National Institutes of Health, or NIH, says these energy drinks are not recommended for children, teens, and young adults. While in some cases they improve physical endurance simply because of the caffeine that they contain, in others they can reduce the steadiness of hands. Remember what I said, too much coffee and your hands will tremble. What's even more dangerous is that brands are not required to declare the amount of caffeine on the label for an energy drink or even a dietary supplement. So you may not be able to know how much caffeine you're actually drinking. Let me repeat that. There is no legal limit on how much caffeine can be put in energy drinks. But you see, your body does have limits. Large amounts of caffeine won't just make you alert. It can also make you nervous. It can cause serious heart problems. It can increase your heart rate and blood pressure. If for some reason your child is consuming an energy drink for whatever purpose, the caffeine could impact their still developing cardiovascular and nervous system. So caffeine for children is a big no-no. It's widely known that caffeine use is associated with anxiety, sleep problems, digestive issues, dehydration. No wonder many adults are choosing to remove caffeine from their daily routine. Excess caffeine isn't good for your heart or your mind. Another warning. The festive season is upon us. It's a time when many people binge drink. If you prefer combining caffeinated drinks with alcohol, it's dangerous. Your reaction time could be impaired. Simply put, don't do it. Another point, these energy drinks also contain sugar. Way more sugar in a single can than recommended for an entire day. Let me ask you, are you consuming an energy drink right before a workout? Well, experts say you should avoid strenuous exercise after consuming an energy drink because it puts too much strain on your cardiovascular system. Look, I'm not saying the occasional energy drink is harmful, but if you're regularly consuming a concoction of caffeine, added sugar, other stimulants, it can be dangerous. And if you have a heart condition, it can be fatal. If you're lucky and don't have any heart condition, too much caffeine can still strain your heart. Watch out for a strange headache, sudden fatigue, palpitation, shortness of breath. If any of this happens after consuming that drink, stop right there and seek medical help.